of all subjects calling for rethinking in our time, death takes a foremost place. We seem to be a death-ridden culture. Death in one form or another seems to be the chief news. Yet at the same time, it is a theme we avoid. It is not quite nice to talk about it. It must be hushed up. All possible medical means must be taken to keep a person alive, even at immense cost of money, suffering and difficulty. The dread of death looms large in many minds. In others, there is a basic unconcern. As we can know so little about what, if anything, happens hereafter, it is best to ignore the whole unpleasant subject. Such is often the attitude. In the materialism of our time, we tend to identify ourselves with our bodies. How can consciousness continue without the brain? This is perhaps the strongest argument of those who do not believe in survival. Even among believers and religiously minded people, the stress is constantly on rest hereafter. Quite obviously, such concepts imply a tacit assumption that we are our bodies and that the soul is tied to the body when it dies. But to those who believe in extinction of consciousness after death and demand proof of survival, perhaps the right answer would be to counter-attack and say, on the contrary, you produce me one shred of real evidence that you are extinguished. I challenge you that your belief is sheer superstition. An immense body of circumstantial evidence is now available for any mind that is prepared to look at it openly and without prejudice, to show that the soul continues very much alive. No evidence has been produced for its extinction. It is indeed remarkable that there is no word in our language to imply that most majestic and solemn of processes, the release of the soul into light. For this is what the passage through the gate of death really is. Death has in the last centuries become so much associated with the hideous corpse and rotting cadaver. Jura's dance of death portrays the sinister form coming to tap us on the shoulder with the fearful summons. It is time we broke clear away from this outdated attitude and recognized that the spiritual entity of man is imperishable. We should therefore drop out of our vocabulary those words which identify the soul of man with the mechanical process by which the physical sheath is discarded and decays. We must wake up to the great conception that on all levels there can be no death without rebirth, a becoming through release onto subtler and more light-filled planes of life. We may thus have the certainty that the liberated soul is free to range in wide realms of life and that the possibility of exploration joyous adventure and creative activity open up to us in the hereafter.